what does your identity mean to you and how does it make you unique? I think um, there's a lot of intersections about like who I am as a person. I think first being a woman and being Japanese American or Japanese, um, it has definitely brought up its own challenges. And I'm also queer, so I'm like a queer Japanese woman. It's just the three, the three uh, points of the triangle are just definitely there. My identity was something that I never really like thought much about. Um, I think that comes from growing up in a really white town. Um, I tended to not resonate much with my Asian identity. Being Japanese, it feels weird to me because I look Asian, however my name doesn't feel Asian. Growing up, I've been teased a lot about that. I have a very, very Japanese name um, and navigating through my childhood with that was always interesting. But over time, I've kind of be like, my name's actually pretty cool. Like I, I can really get behind my name. It's something that I take pride in now. Um, I used to be kind of embarrassed by it, but like I've definitely come to realize like it's a unique part of who I am and it's something I can really appreciate. Being Japanese American has been super important in my life. Going to Japanese school, uh, playing in the Japanese American basketball leagues. Uh, as a kid, I didn't really appreciate that as much, but um, as I grew older, uh, I learned to appreciate um, how special and unique those experiences were that tied me back to the community. What are your family's connections to the internment camps and how has it affected you? My grandfather was interned at Tule Lake. Both of my grandparents and all of my family on my dad's side was interned in Colorado. My family was interned at uh, Manzanar, Tule Lake, and Gila Bend. Coming out of the camps, my family was kind of forced to assimilate back into society and and one of the ways that my great-great-grandparents tried to help their kids assimilate back into American society was to lose the language. I felt like ashamed for not knowing my own language or knowing Japanese and everything and was like really frustrated with my ancestors for not like passing down any Japanese culture or like traditions and everything. Aside from like financial repercussions and things like they can never recover from. They had to also like assimilate to American culture, which is most likely why my dad and my grandma never really spoke Japanese and how it was never passed down to me. So that's probably where I feel the disconnect. What is the role of the current generation of Asian Americans in ensuring that such anti-AAPI violence in history is not buried or forgotten? I think our role really comes down to uh, bridging the gap between cultures and generations. We can do that by either individual efforts or like help to start discussions about it in ways that we did not grow up like learning about it in schools. I think at the academic setting, I think we need to have a lot more research, a lot more scholarly um, studies. And I think in like the personal level, I think it really just up to us like making sure that history is not forgotten. We can't forget what happened. It is something that we need to remember so it never happens again. If we don't talk about the stories of the Issei and Nisei that were interned, um, their stories will be forgotten. And um, that uh, kind of opens the door for this uh, systemic racism to kind of come back and happen again. And um, I think it's our job to share the stories and, and build bonds between um, different groups of people. Hi, my name is Hannah Abe. I'm this year's director of Blossom, Sadako and the Thousand Cranes. I want to start off by thanking you for coming to this year's production. Me, along with Owen Wong, Brandon Chan, and Asumi Shuda started planning this production back in June. And there's a lot of discussion about what we should do for this year's Culture Night. A lot of the inspiration from this play came from personal experiences from myself, along with Culture Night producers Owen Wong, Brandon Chan, and our president, Asumi Shuda. We also talked to a lot of members within NSU, and we were able to learn the different experiences of so many individuals all across the United States about growing up Asian American. Growing up Asian American is such a unique and different experience for everyone, and in this year's play, we really wanted to highlight how different and unique the experiences of each individual can be. On behalf of the Culture Night team, we hope that you learned a little bit more about the Japanese American experience 
and we hope that you have a great rest of your night.